darlings, welcome to episode five of Greenwood Talks. Can you even believe it? Five episodes now. I can't believe it. Anyhow, I'm I'm enjoying this nice, um, it's from a sustainable farm, this new wine, because they stopped making the wine that I've been drinking. I was quite upset by that. The same brand's Merlot, but oh, Merlot is terrible, darlings. I just can't stand it. Um, it's a bit sour, um, sort of a, a tart flavor, but sort of citrusy. So I, I'm, I'm quite fond of this new wine, um, and it's a lot cheaper than um, the ones I've been drinking. So that's sort of a plus. And supporting sustainable farming, of course, um, is something I enjoy. So let's just go straight into the questions. Now, I got a lot this week. I was quite surprised um, and also very pleased about it. Um, so everyone either submitted anonymously or asked that the names not be disclosed or they use a pseudonym. Um, and there's so many, I think I'm going to actually have to um, push some of them back for next week's episode. Um, but that's actually quite lovely, darlings. I'm glad so many of you have things you want my advice on. So we'll dive in so that this doesn't get to be too long. Let's see here. The first one says, Dear King Throndwil, I'm in love with someone I'm not supposed to love. Though I'm an orphan and can do what I want, I know his family will oppose the match, and that makes me sad. Um, I don't want him to part with his family to be with me, but he's told me that to give up on us would be unbearable, and I share the same feeling. What can we do to make our kin and kith understand that we love each other? We just want to be happy, not to hurt them. Please give us some advice. Sincerely, heartbroken elf lass. Well, I must say, darling, um, let's see. I sort of addressed this um, in a previous uh, Greenwood talk, I believe it was. Um, but we'll just sort of get into it again. So I would say, um, first and foremost, of course, um, you're going to have to tell your, your parents... Um, well, or whatever, since you're an orphan, whatever family you consider to be um, your your own um, sort of parents or brothers and sisters, whatever it is that you sort of made your family, you need to talk to them, darling. And of course, um, your, um, oh yes, so your man, of course, will have to talk to his family. And um, like I said in one of my earlier ones, I would suggest that you make sure to stress that their approval for your relationship is very important, darling. Um, because I feel like when someone sort of wants your approval, you sort of aren't as defensive. And I think a lot of times with these relationships that um, that maybe our parents or friends or family sort of um, are against, a lot of times I feel there's some sort of defensive feelings or feeling like, um, like abandonment or you're not um, sort of listening to something that they had said you know it can be any of these things it can be um, it can be very terrible things a sort of um, racist traditional feelings or things like of that nature um, but make sure to stay positive make sure to always talk about how you feel um, sort of don't um, tr try not to step on anyone's toes and say, well, you said, no, when I heard you say, I felt those sorts of things tend to sort of soften the blow a little bit. Um, and then, of course, as I've suggested before, I would say try to um, find some common ground um, between uh, your partner and um, your family. And of course, he should do um, something of the same and see if there's a way to sort of um, have his parents and your family sort of meet, um, all that sort of thing, so that you can sort of meet in a more neutral zone. It's not just they're meeting him, they're sort of meeting other people um, in his family, and I feel like it's a little easier when you're sort of got a lot of other things going on to sort of distract, so the pressure's not so much on just the two of you, and um, Particularly if there are some things that you all have in common, I feel like the more of you there are, the more likely these um, topics are to come up. So I'm just going to move on along here. Uh, let us see. Dear King Throndwil, As a hobbit, I've had no profession up until last year when I finally got a job as a teacher in a school in Bree. It's quite a lovely place to teach, I hear. Although I live far away from my family, who all are in Hobbiton, and surrounded by strangers, I enjoy my work very much. I find that teaching is fun and exciting, and I do love it in spite of all the hard work it entails. 
The school year has finally come to an end now, and I've had to say goodbye to my wee students. That's made me so sad. I know more experienced teachers sometimes can't wait for the year to end and move on to different classes, but these are my first students I have ever taught. They're really good, well-behaved, and eager to learn. I don't know what to do. I miss them so much already. Can you give me some advice? How should I deal with this sadness? Kind regards, Hobbit teacher in a slump. Well, my Hobbit friend, let me just say first and foremost, of course, um, sort of when we build a relationship, especially with children, you know, um, it's always so sad. Um, and the fact that you are so attached to them means you're probably a much better teacher than these sort of um, jaded, you call them experience, but let's be honest, jaded teachers. And of course, teaching can, can certainly wear you down. Um, but I feel like anyone who sort of has an interest in, in teaching in and of itself, of course, is going to be sad when they don't have um, those who they've been teaching there to, to sort of um, to receive their knowledge. Especially if you have a good relationship, it sounds like your students are all, well, the best you could ask for, really, you know, paying attention and, and, and eager to learn as well as well behaved. I mean, you can't really ask for much more. Um, so it's understandable that you're sad and, and know that that is a natural thing, of course. As far as ways to get over your sadness, well, darling, I think you should pull up um, a nice comfy chair and, um, and open a bottle of whatever it is you like to drink. You know, I find that always a little bit sort of helpful when um, things are going bad. And then just sort of surround yourself with the things that are positive. If there's a way that you can keep in touch with any of your students, I would say um, you should try for it. I mean, ask them if you have, I'm not sure if you will see them again if you've already passed that. But if you have a way to contact any of them, I would say ask for them to sort of give you updates about their life, either sort of letters or something. You can make it related to something that you've taught if you um, if you're teaching Western, for instance, um, you could have it sort of as a writing practice, anyone who wants to continue um, to sort of send you letters and that sort of thing, or, um, or you know, just come up with some way that you, you can keep in touch with them that maybe will continue to motivate them. Now, um, we're getting kind of low on time, so I'm going to jump up to um, one last anonymous one here. Um, which is, is really just a compliment, darling, but I thought I should just address it anyhow, because it did ask me a question at the end, of course. Um, so it said, you're geeky and cute, and I think I'm in love. Darling, how do I deal with it? Well, I have wonderful advice for you. I would say, of course, that you should, um, you should tell me who you are so we can have a bit of a chat, darling. Um, you know, I like to get to know you all a little more personally. So, um, if you're too shy for that, and I understand, darling, some people are too shy, um, well, just, just open up a bottle of wine and, and just have a couple of glasses um, while you're watching my videos. Um, if it's a bit of a problem, I know sometimes um, feelings can be a bit troublesome, you know, darling. Um, if, if that's sort of the thing, um, oh dear, I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, how do you deal with it? Well, do you want to deal with it? Of course you want to deal with it, darlings. I'm totally messing up this entire video because I'm just so flattered. I'm so touched, you know. So many of you leave such nice comments like this all the time. I don't know that I'm particularly geeky. I mean, of course, I'm a little bit. Um, and cute. Well, darling, I've never heard that one before. I promise you. Um, but I'm glad that I can give you something that you enjoy enough to um, consider sort of love. It's sort of a strong word, isn't it, darling? You know, I've had a bit of a crush on 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 a person before, and I remember that it was it was sort of a fun little thing. You know, um, just acknowledging the feelings was sort of a game in and of itself. And I, and I don't mean to dismiss your feelings at all, darling. I I don't know how deeply they are, um, but uh, there's something there's something very fun about being sort of in love or crushing on someone, as they say. And so I'd say that you should just sort of explore those feelings and find out where they come from. And, and of course, again, um, lots of wine, darling. Lots of wine helps everything. You know, it's sort of a, a cure-all, as long as you can tolerate alcohol, that is. Um, but it just sort of makes everything so much better, don't you think, darling? 
Anyhow, I'm just going to ramble on and drink all night long at this rate. So I'm just going to close this all up now. Um, so thank all three of you for your lovely questions. And um, the other two of you, um, you know who you are out there. I will get your questions next week. And I'm so glad that you all tuned in with me again, as always. And um, I look forward to having a conversation with you again. So ta-ta, darlings.